how does the stock of a gigantic $120 billion company like Starbucks manage to rally nearly 9% in a single session like you did on Friday? Normally, you only get that kind of move when there's a takeover bid. But Starbucks made it happen simply by reporting some spectacular numbers. It was truly a tour de force quarter. How'd they do it? Okay, to get your head around this story, we need to go back a year to the quarter Starbucks were po- posted 12 months ago, the one they just slapped. A year ago, the company gave you some truly not so hot numbers. Same store sales grew by just 1%. And China, their biggest growth market, was down an astounding 2%. It was enough to make you feel that this once great company's that best days were indeed behind them. At the time, I had just done a shoot at Bluestone Lane. That's a small, privately held coffee shop chain with its irrepressible founder and CEO, Nicholas Stone. We shot the segment at their brand new, gorgeous Upper East Side store in commemoration of their fifth year in the coffee business. Nick and I spent a lot of time talking about analogies between the beer industry, where the old-time brewers were in decline, eclipsed by smaller, faster-growing, craft breweries, and coffee shop space, Starbucks versus Bluestone. The interview was simultaneously a high-five, chest-bumping affair for craft coffee, and yes, indeed, a funeral dirge for Starbucks. But man, Starbucks did not get the memo. At the exact same time that the coffee colossus was supposed to be dead and buried, then-rookie CEO Kevin Johnson was making moves under the rubric of growth at scale, that would ultimately allow him to deliver the breathtaking numbers we saw last week. First and foremost, Johnson was his own man. You can't envy anyone who comes in on the heels of the now-retired founder, Howard Schultz. Within the industry, Schultz is a revered figure. Who knew how his former minions would respond to a quiet, low-key, almost anonymous successor like Johnson, especially one who came in from tech, from telco tech? I mean, The obituaries for Starbucks practically wrote themselves when a Juniper executive took over. But Johnson had a few cards up his sleeve. In the spring of 2018, he offloaded the company's consumer packaged goods division to Nestle for $7.15 billion, then used the proceeds for one of the largest, most aggressive buybacks I have ever seen in my career. When Starbucks reported those subpar sales a year ago and the stock got hammered, Johnson unleashed that buyback on the bears. The stock was so heavy that I worried that the buyback would have no impact initially. But Johnson didn't care. You know why? Because he was hatching a comeback fueled by technology and convenience. And that's why Starbucks brought in a CEO from tech, from Juniper, of all places. KJ, as he's known on the street, recognized that if he could improve digital ordering, if he could solve the throughput problem, if he could make delivery happen, he could then orchestrate a magnificent turnaround, regardless of what the competition was up to. Oh, and it didn't hurt that Starbucks also rolled out some terrific new products across the day, like uh, about the specialized coffees and, yes, Nitro, which is a millennial, sorry, and a Gen Z favorite. I know many doubted Johnson at the time. I didn't. I believed him, though, because I loved him at Juniper and because he explained that the real issues plaguing Starbucks had to do with making the stores more convenient and hospitable. They had a kind of Yogi Berra problem, as in nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. Johnson rolled out all sorts of new technology to make it easier for you to buy his coffee. The result? It all came together. Crisp delivery, better throughput, faster lines, all with the same personalization we're used to from Starbucks. The company delivered 7% U.S. same-store sales growth, and two of those points came from digitization. Plus that addition of the night show iced coffee, it did reignite the sleepy afternoon day part. That's big money. And it brought in more traffic year over year. Oh, and Bluestone, look, I think there's more than enough room for the Bluestones of the world and for Starbucks. And everyone else in the coffee business, for that matter, the artisanal coffee versus a corporate coffee setup, always a false dichotomy. Starbucks just needed better technology to orchestrate a fantastic global same-store sales acceleration from 1% to 6% in a single year. Fortunately, Starbucks brought in a tech guy as its CEO, and he has delivered. And you know what? Even after this move with Kevin Johnson at the helm, I think the stock's got more room to run, although it did get downgraded by a couple of firms today. Uh, After it settles down, I would take the other side of those sellers. Stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.